After my video yesterday looking at the Xbox One S compared to the original Xbox One, many of you asked for other titles and also whether or not it actually improved it versus the PS4 and some of the titles that have already been released. Well, I've gone back and looked at those titles, more Xbox One titles and also the PS4. So let's get down and dirty with Quantum Break. In Remedy's time shift in beauty, you can see already that the Xbox One S tears a lot less than the original Xbox One. It also dips a lot less frames throughout these real-time cinematics. And as you can see, although tearing is not completely solved on the Xbox One S, it is greatly reduced and not only this but in action the same benefits also apply less dips less tearing the real-time cinematics are always a perfect like-for-like -like example but in action we also see similar improvements of around three to five percent overall which again is a bonus if not a game changer The Division also benefits, although far from an issue on either console, pretty much a locked 30 on both machines, it did dip occasionally on the Xbox One during firefights and some tearing occasionally, which has now been completely eradicated in my tests so far. What used to dip on the Xbox One in the internal shootout now completely holds a locked solid 30 frames per second. In fact, the only dips that I got in this entire section was outside, and that is certainly a streaming CPU issue and nothing to do with the GPU. So how does it fare against the PS4 now? If you recall from my original head-to-head -head analysis, the PS4 held a pretty much lock-solid 30 frames per second. And now the Xbox One joins in on that game and doesn't really dip at all in like-for-like -like comparison tests. This means that the Xbox One S now performs pretty much identically to the PS4, aside the dynamic resolution change. But I must stress, the original Xbox One wasn't really that bad at all, with only minor dips throughout play, and the PS4 was that little bit better, but this Xbox One S version now seems to remove those small issues. Albeit less than a percent difference overall in my tested sections, it's still welcome. Stepping right back to a launch title on the Xbox One and Xbox One S, we can already see that the early dips have now been eradicated on the Xbox One S. Blowing up the tower and firing up some alpha effects and explosions, we can see an upwards of 7 FPS change between the two here, which is quite substantial. Now 60 FPS titles like this will gain the most from the new GPU power. Now just to reiterate, these are brand new installs as of today. So both versions are in the same version on the same hard drive. Some of these dips do come from streaming issues mine. But overall we can see a 3.5% in this early section. And using this heavily scripted chase sequence does give you a near identical like for like on both machines. And obviously that includes the PS4, which yes, has also been reinstalled as of today with the same patched versions and on its internal SSD. It's close, but it doesn't quite beat the PS4, but it's certainly closer than it used to be. Moving on to the other section though, when you're running through the scripted sequences, we do actually see the Xbox One S pull ahead ever so slightly in a couple of places. One of those is the fact that the lowest dip is on the PS4, but again, some of this is down to the streaming, but most of it is down to the GPU. I do stress these are the same installs running on exactly the same hard drives. Obviously, I mean make, not the actual physical hard drive. That would be just silly. And yes, we are still talking about a resolution difference here for anyone that's going to get up in arms about it. It's 720p versus 900p. It's not suddenly leapt up to 1080 on the Xbox One S. So moving on to the title that saw the biggest game from my original test, now we're looking at the Xbox One S versus the PS4 on Final Fantasy XV. And as you can see, although it does improve it over the base Xbox One, it still doesn't pull ahead of the PS4 release here. Although as I covered in my technical analysis of both versions, it really isn't saying a lot as the game suffered from many issues, of which as you can see the PS4 version still suffers from frame pacing issues but as we saw from the E3 demo on the Xbox One, they have improved performance on that model, and I'm pretty sure they'll do the same on the PS4. Be sure to check back near a launch where I'll have my detailed look at the game. 
There are a few occasions where the PS4 seems to struggle more than the Xbox One S here, but this is a demo and it had its fair share of issues, so there's not too much conclusions to draw from this other than the Xbox One S does improve it over the base model and it gets much closer to the PS4's performance, albeit with that same resolution gap. Bringing up a CPU-centric title in Just Cause 3, we can see that the Xbox One S from yesterday's test didn't improve over the base, and it's certainly no better than the PS4 one here either, and that hasn't improved even though we are running version 105 here, the latest patch, which doesn't really do anything at all. Loading was improved and I have no crashes from memory leaks since, but overall the game still suffers from horrendous slowdown and frame dips into the mid-teens as I covered with my initial analysis before launch and this doesn't change anything at all. The title overall is woeful on both machines and I feel far beyond the scope of any patch repair. Which brings us nicely onto another game that suffers from patch issues, performance issues and obviously CPU resource. Yes, as I covered at launch, the PS4 version did struggle dipping into lock points of 20 FPS and most of these came from the CPU which got patched and improved, possibly by some better threading. But now we can see the improvements from the original game, or at least the original launch, is now a lock solid 30 frames, give or take, in this opening section with the Deathclaw. But moving to the latest patch on both 108, we can see identical dips on both machines and it really isn't a great performer overall. It's inconsistent but due to the large scale of the world it's hard to get like for like examples throughout. This is a perfect test as it shows the game struggles no matter what you're doing but once you move into action here even with the comedy physics in tow it struggles and locks at 20 fps far too often it does happen more often on the ps4 and the xbox one does perform slightly better but both versions are nothing to write home about and unsurprisingly the s changes nothing Returning to Toussaint with The Witcher 3 and Geralt, we see a more stable release on the Xbox One S here, with the small dips re-eradicated from the standard Xbox One. It now toes the line pretty much identically to the PS4 in this opening battle. CG Project Red brought enhancements to the engine from light tonal shifts and also improvements to batch control on the CPU and GPU and this has all been covered in my analysis of the game or at least the DLC when it launched but now we see a pretty locked 30 aside a few dips that both versions have in this opening section from the alpha effects as the troll hits the floor. But moving into the water section a little later in the demo, we do still see the Xbox One dip where the PS4 one didn't, but again these are reduced, which means the Xbox One S is closer to the PS4's performance, but still doesn't fix all of the issues, and that's to be expected. This is still quite a heavy open world game, and it may not all be related just to the GPU. So we come to the final game and one that's been heavily requested from me for anyone who wanted me to revisit the Doom release on the Xbox One. Here we go. Compared to the original launch and here on the Xbox One S with the latest patch, you can see that the game does still dip, but actually it's a huge improvement. But much of this is actually coming from the Xbox One S. We see dips where we didn't get them before, and even though you can't get exact like-for-like -like frames here, we are very close, and we're looking at around an average of 1.5 to 2 frames throughout the tested sections here, so the Xbox One S certainly brings improvements to a game like Doom. Now it is still sporting a lower resolution base than the PS4, they're both dynamic, but I don't see any improvement here from the Xbox One S over the standard Xbox One, but those performance improvements are welcome even if the resolution dipping looks to be the same. Now compared to the PS4, how close do we now get? Well, it's pretty much the same story we've seen throughout this test. It's close, but not quite there. It's certainly better than the standard Xbox One, and the dynamic resolution is lower on the Xbox One S still, but the performance is better, if not quite at the same level of the PS4. But it doesn't change everything, and it pretty much sums up what I covered in my video yesterday. The Xbox One S does have very slight advantages over the standard one, but there's no reason to buy it for any improvement. I think I've shown here from all of the games that I've covered, if you are buying this for any kind of benefit on performance, you're wasting your money. But there are other reasons to buy it, and certainly I will cover those in my review. Now if you have any more games you want me to cover, or you have any more feedback on this or requests, then please drop them below or follow me on Twitter and give me more information. 
and I'll see you on the next one.